Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains. Here, this is the spot. Where the conversation is pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. Welcome home, Brains. There's only one requirement to hang out on the edge, is that you open your big brain and close your small mind. Did you bring your thinking caps? It's time to put them on, because the conversation starts So, Marlu, you are in one of my favorite places on the planet, Santa Monica, California. I was originally, uh, I went to college there. And uh, yes, Brains, I went to college. (laughs) You didn't think so? You thought I was just playing all this time? No, no. Uh, But you are on the edge, the place where the conversation is pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. Brains, today we have Marlu Harris. Again, from Santa Monica, she is an amazing psychotherapist that works with couples and relationships. And I'm going to talk to her about that because I really think that uh, my relationship is the best one on the planet after 37 years. Oh, yes. We got a lot to talk about. What's going on in the world? You know, there's a lot of people that are still dealing with uh, inner child work that needs to be done. So she has a great program, uh, her uh, Rapid Transformation Therapy. RTT program. She just released it again. Uh, what about the empath? What about the person that just absorbs everything like a sponge? I mean, you could be across the street crying about something and the empath will feel it. What about that person? And also, you know what's on everybody's tongue? These Akashic records. What is that? Why do we want to delve that far? And who's keeping, you know, who's keeping the, 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 Who's a gatekeeper for that? So we're going to talk to her about that and a whole lot more. Let's welcome her to the edge. Our guest today, Marlou Harris. Hi, beautiful. Hi, April. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy to have you. Did you, were you able to go to the beach with that cute little dog this morning? I, yes, I have been able to go to the beach with him recently and it's been wonderful. Oh, I miss it. Uh, Mr. Magnificent just told me the other day, he says, you can go look for your dog, but it's so much responsibility. It's so much work. It's, it, you know, but there's nothing like some puppy love, right? Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So tell us about your love for mankind and, you know, helping people navigate through relationships because they're tough. Yes, and yes, absolutely. I am one of these lifelong learners. I just can't get enough. So I'm learning and grabbing information from so many places. And I keep going back to working with couples and helping individuals also heal relationship wounds. (coughs) So because for me, love makes the world go round. So it's, it's starting with self-love and then moving out from there. And so what I found is a psychotherapist, and I've been licensed now for over 30 or almost 30 years. Um, so well, you must have so, started when you were 14. Oh, my uh, God. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they let me in. They just snuck me in there. <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Um, so... But anyway, so many people are concerned about what do I say? How do I communicate? How do I make my relationship better? You know, how to deal with conflict. And so that's been a big focus of mine throughout my whole practice. Um, so, yeah. So, and, and so I also want, I know that I worked as a custody evaluator for the courts in LA. Mm. I worked um, oh. as a mediator. That's so, tough. That's tough. So I, I feel like I've had so many, um, so much training in so many different areas that I really feel blessed and grateful to really have a, you know, like an insight to what's going to make a relationship better. And, and it's, you know, so I love it when people come in as newlyweds, you know, or in the beginning of the relationship so that they can um, unlearn any bad habits they already have and just start increasing the their own abundance of love in so many ways and then of course i love to work with anybody who wants to learn and grow and change and make their lives better 
So that's part of my love for mankind, if that answers well, your question. It does. But let me let me delve into that and then we'll go into the other things because you are, you know, you are so textured and so layered and I love that. Uh, let's talk a little bit about relationships. Two things that I have found in my experience that are deal breakers. Infidelity and money. Okay. okay. But then I know that there's a lot of people that are able to forgive infidelity because is it just the act of sex? Is it the control? Is it the lack of attention? Or is it actually getting in someone's head and developing a relationship? Because when you get into someone's head and you're starting to crave that person and sharing intimate details, it takes that relationship to a whole different level. Do you find that those are some of the things that are real deal breakers and that you deal with constantly when it comes to couples' relationships and problems in their relationships? That's, uh, well, first of all, that's an excellent question. And I will say that there's always something behind the behavior. So if it has mm -hmm. to do with infidelity, it's about people can grow and change and actually forgive and move on through that. It is a deal break for many people and many people end their relationships based on that. So it's such an individual thing. There's not any one answer, obviously, to that question. But so with infidelity, I will only work with couples if there's not an ongoing, you know, active infidelity. So that has to be dealt with, looked underneath what's going on here. Because what happens is some people are so afraid or so closed off about communicating their needs to their partner whatever they, their needs may be, you know, just being able to express themselves, that mm -hmm. they may go off and have an affair with someone because it fulfills some kind of need of being wanted or being desired or admired or whatever it is. Right. Right. And so they're moving away from the relationship. So I, that's why I want to say, no, let's not do that. You may be thinking about doing that and that's the time to talk to me. Right. 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 You, you know, because we think all kinds of things. We fantasize all the time and all that's OK. But let's before we actually act, before you actually take the step is obviously the best time. But yes, they can be healed with money. One of the biggest problems I've seen is that one person may do something with the money that does the other person doesn't know and they find out. Um, so there have been a few of those situations. And actually in these those they've actually been able to mend it, repair it. Well, I love what you said when you gave permission to have fantasies. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, brains, the imagination is really what sets it off. Okay. The orgasm begins in the mind. The attraction begins in the mind. And to give a person permission to explore that, you can't control every aspect of an individual. But again, like you said, if you start acting upon that, then you got a problem. You got a problem and you need to communicate. Uh, after 37 years, I think that uh, I still uncover things about my husband and he still uncovers things about me. But we're very honest. We laugh a lot. We talk a lot. Uh, we share, you know, what's mine is his and what his is mine. And we did that from the get-go. I never was one of those wives that started to ask for permission. Can I do this? Can I do that? Uh, no. I came in as my own woman. I will leave as my own woman. And I respect his space as well. Uh, you know, people's privacy. What do you feel in a relationship? Should there be a lot of privacy uh, or secrecy? You know, like not having access to your partner's cell phone or, uh, you know, going through their pockets or, you know, uh, questioning the people that they hang around with. You know, I think that that kind of stirs up some trouble, but I don't know. What's your, what's your thought on privacy? Um, okay. Well, that's a good question because when you're together and you're married or you're in living together and you see each other 24 seven, you want to have some kind of rules in your relationship. Um, in terms of that kind of thing. For example, um, if you keep a journal and you want that to be private, then you make a rule that this is my private space. Do you have to go to the, if, if you have to go and lock it up with a key in a, in a safe, then that's a little concerning. 
It is, it is concerning. On the other hand, everybody does need their privacy. They need their separate space. So what I think what the research shows um, that for example, women really require female friendships and a little bit more than men requiring men friendships. So that's one thing just to be able to have that space. Like I can go out with my friends and I want you to trust me you know, when I go out with my friends. Mm -hmm. And if there is some element of distrust, let's talk about it. You know, let's bring it up. Um, <clears throat> let's talk about that big $25 word, trust. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, <laughs> you know, well, trust is uh, tricky because it can hold you captive. You know, trust is contingent on something else. So say, for example, uh, there's uh, infidelity in a relationship. Okay, well, if you don't call when you get off work, I don't trust you. If I can't have access to your cell phone, I don't trust you. Uh, if, um, I, I, I don't know. Trust is something that makes the other person beholden. And it's conditional. What's your well, thought? If there's, you're talking about a situation where there has been been infidelity. So if there has been infidelity, yes, it there it takes there is a period of time that it takes to process that for the other person who has been betrayed mm -hmm. to feel safe again and to feel that they can trust their partner again. So sometimes it is it takes that that uh, flavor of I'm going to, you know, you have to call me at 3 p.m. every day or 6 p.m. or whatever it is. And so sometimes that's dif that's a difficult period for sure. It That's is a difficult. really difficult because the trust has been uh, tat torn, right? And it, you have to rebuild it. And it, so that that's a really tough period. And so sometimes people don't hang in there. They don't. You know? But, you know, I know people with these polyamorous relationships, too. And, I mean, that's confusing for me to be loving more than one person and everybody be okay with it. But that's yeah. the sign of the times. A lot of people, and it takes a certain maturity. Um, to, it does, to and it takes a lot of work. Setting boundaries constantly, having meetings, having conversations. I mean, most most people just don't have those kind of deep conversations all the time. Right. And, and that's, so it, you're you know, navigating about, all these relationships. Right, but it's a, a person with a lot of needs or desires or, you know, flavors, options, choices. It just depends on where your head is at and how mature you are and willing to accept or willing to give or how freaky you are. <laughs> okay, let's talk about Akashic Records. All right. That keeps coming up, coming up, coming up. All my guests are talking about it. Tell me, what is the Akashic Records and why are they so important? Okay. Well, that's a that's a huge question. And so, I, and it's a little bit, uh, it's multi-layered. But the Akashic Records are, it's a field in the it's a, it's a it's a quantum field that contains every aspect of all of our lives past present future where everything that we've ever said done in any life is recorded so essentially it's like a, a vast library and that's why it's called the akashic records the akasha is the field is this quantum field where the records are stored now it's um, the thing that I think helps people the most is if you ever watched any of the Harry Potty, Potter movies or, mm -hmm. or um, read the books where they had this ministry of magic where he would go in and these books would come down off the shelves and he could see scenes and right. uh, this kind of thing. So it's really, that was to me such a beautiful representation uh, of the Akashic records that it's it's also individual what the way i like to work in the records is to um help individuals help people groups even access their own field which is getting into a meditative state and then and then traveling upward you know being grounded in the earth but traveling upward so it's like a, it's a journey in a sense wow so it's fascinating it's i think it's just so there's just so much there. How did you get started in it? How did how did you start delving into that? You know, well, that's an interesting question because I I've been a meditator for many years and I have also been drawn to different teachings and mentors and teachers. I I'm one of these that you know, 
I'll learn from a person for a year or two and then move on and get more information. And so I was studying some books from Wayne Dyer. So Wayne Dyer, by the way, I love oh, dearly. Oh, I know. I, used to, <laughs> I created an audience for him one time. And Did he you? Was, oh, my God. He was amazing with his bare feet. And the aura, when you walked into the room with him, it was the the whole... The whole aura of the room changed. The whole cosmic energy just changed. It just, it was amazing. It was amazing. Oh, that's, yes, and I just was privileged to be in his audience one time. Um, but I want to show you, I actually have this here, right here, actually. I just, this, this is one of his books, and I'm just going to pop mm -hmm. it in because it's Wishes Fulfilled. And this book came across, I'd read many of his books, starting from, your erroneous zones back in the 70s mm. he was like the first self-help author i think mm -hmm. but well one of them and anyway um he talks about a woman gave him a beautiful gift that was this golden packet with golden ribbon and he used to get gifts all the time and he would just donate them you know because people would send him things because they loved him so much and he helped them so much and he was he would donate them and this one thing kept popping up and he finally opened it and the gift was a book that was channeled by um, one of the ascended masters named Saint Germain. Mm -hmm. And the book is called um, The I Am Doctrine or The I Am Principle. So I'm reading this book, Wishes Fulfilled, right? I'm reading Wishes Fulfilled. I was in Maui for a, a writer's conference. And I, and I say, I, I jokingly say, I picked up up Wayne Dyer hitchhiking on the freeway because he had just passed away so I said I, I picked up Wayne Dyer over there in Maui that's where he lived and he came in with me and we took this journey together mm. so I feel like he's kind of been my buddy but anyway this book led me back to Saint Germain and I started studying these the I am principle which is basically um, tuning into your connection with spirit the I am like Jesus said I am the way the right. truth and the light yeah. right so anyway, with, with that, I was going on one of my apps searching, is there any meditation about St. Germain? So I, was, so I was kind of following this guidance and this uh, meditation came up on Insight Timer about healing ancestral wounds, something like that with St. Germain. So I started listening to that and then this woman, her name is Tracy Goody. I started you know, following her and then a year or two later, she she said she's doing a training in Akashic Records. And so I, because I had followed her and listened to this meditation and some of her other meditations, I just said, I'm ripe for this. I'm ready. Mm. And, and so that's kind of how it started for me. I was just, wow. It was just leading. And it started with Wayne. Wow. Dyer. <laughs> right. Well, you know what? He's, he was a way maker for many. Absolutely. Yes. So like crazy paths. You know these little paths that we follow and i'm, I'm very tuned into my intuition and so if i get an er you know a nudge a few times right i'll say okay let me check that out right um i try not to be too impulsive although i can do that too <laughs> no but you can be empathic yes that's, definitely. and so you know that's that's a lot of heavy lifting that you're doing there you are an empath you are a person that uh, helps people go through their Akashic records, and you're also a therapist. Um, tell me a little bit about the empath, and then I want you to tell me a little bit about how you ground and level yourself out, because you're doing a lot of heavy lifting there, Marlon. Yes, and thank you for that. I appreciate your acknowledgement of that. It really makes me feel good, because it is, it is, you know, heavy lifting. As much as I love it, it, it takes a lot of effort, right. and and discipline and 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 also i you know i haven't always known i was an empath mm -hmm. but i took so many roads down i would be hurt when someone said something and i would think something was wrong with me or i would get mad at someone and 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 so i i i started to study that um empath survival guide by judith orloff and i actually met and had some sessions with her in person because i wanted to really try to um, learn some techniques. So I actually uh, have, there are some skills of um, grounding. So should I go into that now? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I have a real simple, I call it, um, it's, it's not 
particularly unique to me, but I call it sun above, earth below. And if you wanted, we can just walk through it. It's very simple. So feet flat on the floor. All right, hold on. Let me get, let me get here with you. Mm -hmm. All right, feet flat on the floor. Uh huh. Your feet are flat on the floor. Inhale through your nose. Exhale out of your mouth. And as you exhale, just imagine roots growing out from the soles of your feet all the way down to the center of the earth, grounding you there. Take in another breath. Inhale deeply, exhale, and those roots are actually spreading out too, just like the roots of a tree. So they're going down and they're spreading out so that they're all through the earth below you. And then as you take another breath in, visualize above your head a beautiful sun, a golden, golden orb, just filled with golden energy. And this sun is pouring down beautiful rays over the top of your head and all around your body, surrounding you completely. And it's also going through the crown of your head, the top of your head, and filling you inside with this golden glittery energy, filling your whole entire body, down your shoulders, your arms, your hips, your thighs, all the way down. And then it's traveling down those roots that are growing out from the soles of your feet all the way down to this crystalline center of the earth. And there is this, gold, this green, this emerald green earth energy, and it's intermingling with that, pulling that up, that green earth healing energy up through those roots through your feet and now joining together with this beautiful gold and green energy up through your calves, your thighs, your hips, your chest and your heart area, just really feeling around your heart, filling up your heart and also outside of your body. So outside of your body is this beautiful cocoon of golden and green energy and it's wrapping around your body. And that's surrounding you with the safety, a goal, this cocoon of healing energy. And you are sun above, earth below. You are connected to the heavens and the earth. You are completely connected. You are safe. And I say anything outside of that circle, only thing that I'm allowing into that energy, that cocoon is positive energy that's going to feed my soul, that's going to help me to help myself and help any client that I'm working with anywhere that I'm going today. And it's shielding me also from any negativity so that I don't take on somebody else's energy, that I don't take that on. So that's really that process, the sun that's above. It's beautiful. I really, below. and I felt that I was there with you. You know, I had very deep rooted feelings. Um, and it's very important that we ground ourselves. I see that you're at the beach a lot, and yeah. I'm going out there a lot more. You know, I don't take advantage of it the way that I should living in California. But uh, really grounding yourself and letting out all of those electromagnetic charges from your cell phone, from the microwave, from the stress of the day, from conversations, from social media, from that outside noise, you really need to take time to wiggle your toes in the grass barefoot you know walk walk on the dirt walk on the earth to connect yourself back to be soul centered well you are one amazing woman tell us about rtt and your new program that you've just released okay well one of my honest journey um i <clears throat> found um this training that was started by uh, marissa peer who's very well known and Anyway, it's, it, it was, it's a journey that I, um, I, I took just a, you know, I think I took a class or something. It, yeah, it, was a, it was a course, but it was about how to heal particular areas of your life, any blocks that may be there. So a big part of it is a lot of our, you know, limiting beliefs, our limiting beliefs were formed before age 12, typically, and often even in earlier childhood. So as a therapist, obviously, I've gone through a lot of that with others, with my clients and with myself. And then the spiritual aspect of it too is like, how can I, you know, um, 
dislodge some of these things because we'll, like, like a teacher may say to you in class, for example, that's wrong. You're not, you did something wrong and suddenly you're not, I'm not going to wake up in class ever again, you know, and you mm -hmm. have this fear of public speaking, for example, or something. Right. And so, so with RTT, which is rapid transformational therapy, I was adding that skill set because I've studied hypnosis. Um, I have been studied neuro linguistic programming as well. And I really liked Marissa's way of going back to that child. You know, she takes you back to in a hypnosis, in a, um, in a hypnotic state, in a trance state where you can observe yourself as a child, but you're not re-experiencing it, but you're observing wow. it and you can see, oh, I made this decision. Let's say you go in for fear of public speaking, just as an example. And I remember in the hypnotic state, this teacher yelled at me because I answered the question wrong. And all, all I was doing was answering this question, but it was so shaming for me at the time when I was in second grade that I, you know, unconsciously said, well, it's not safe to speak up in a group, right? It's not safe to speak up in class, you know? So these, these things get formed when we don't, when our brains aren't developed, right? right. Our brains are not developed now until we're about 25. So the research has shown that even you turn an adult and you become an adult at 18 or 21 and your brain is still forming. Right. So anyway, this is, that's one example of that I found so valuable. So I wanted to, um, so then I decided to enroll in her training. So I did take the full training and become certified as a rapid transformational therapy practitioner. Wow. And, and this was all during the pandemic. It was funny, I enrolled before because she was coming to LA and I said, oh yes, cause I love in-person things and then shut right. down. So I still learned a lot. I learned a lot, but it was, it was just an incredible journey because I was wait, wait a minute. I can't go be at the feet, the foot of the masters here. You know? Oh, I know, I know. So what has all this COVID stuff taught you about you as an individual? It has taught me that no matter what is going on in the outside world, I am a spirit in a physical body. I am a soul in a physical body right now, no matter what is going on. And if something like this shutdown, right, which was such, I mean, this is, you know, this is a- So, trying, it's so annoying. <laughs> it is, but it's something that has never happened before in our lifetimes, right? But, it is, it, but it is a necessary evil. Yes. And I believe that, I believe that this is, again, um, in, in my meditation, I have gotten messages that this is the perfect pause. This is the time for awareness and awakening and shifting and editing. So many people, I mean, I know people that have passed, but lost my mother, my friend's mother. One of my friends lost five people within, wow. two, uh, within two years. So God is calling them home. Well, my concern is the ones of us that are left behind. And how are we managing this? And how are we editing and filtering and processing the information and the downloads that we're getting? And are we really looking into uh, our um, epigenetics and things that have happened to us in our previous life? Are we going to be carrying that over to the next life? Because brains, I don't know what y'all's thinking. You don't have to agree with me if you don't want to, but there is somewhere after here, <laughs> okay? I, yes. This is not the end, okay? This is not the end. And it wasn't your beginning. Now you can, you know, agree, we can disagree, whatever. But how do you feel, Marlou? I agree with you. And that's not and that's not the purpose of this to try to convince someone because you have to know what's true for you. Right. You know, yeah, what absolutely. your authentic truth is. And mine is I know there's more than this. I know it and is. Too. Like yeah, and like you do too. And I love what you said about those of us who are left behind because the person who has transitioned is that's where they are. They're, they've transitioned. We're the ones left here on earth because those of us who have decided to incarnate on, on a soul level on the earth plane, we're, we're kind of special really because this is not an easy school, earth school. Earth school has a lot of challenges. And as we learn to say, wow, what is the opportunity in this for me? What is the opportunity in this for me? That's, at first it's like fear. It's like the stages of grief. 
anger, denial, bargaining, acceptance, depression that we went through with this when the pandemic first hit. It's like, oh my God, my life is not the same. Right. My normalcy is gone. Right. Right. And so, but it's like, I'm still, I'm still in here. My soul is like knocking saying, Martin Lou, I'm still here. You know, don't forget about me. Right. This is your opportunity to get to know yourself better. I agree. I agree. Well, knowing you is such a gift. Uh, please you. tell my brains how to get in contact with you, uh, how to work with you, how to get more information. I can't wait to get out of this cocoon we're <laughs> in because I'm coming up there and we're going to go somewhere fabulous. They've redone Santa Monica. We talked about that. Well, they've redone it since I lived here in San Diego. And I want to have lunch with you and just really kind of get into your head a little bit deeper and meet your little dog. <laughs> I would love that so much. I really, um, and I'm going to take you up on it too. You're not going to get away uh, okay. with it. Okay, or you come down here to San Diego. <laughs> yeah, are we, way? absolutely, yeah. absolutely. We can meet halfway, whatever we're two, works. Two hours uh, yeah. apart, two and a half hours apart. But uh, again, mm -hmm. we are in such alignment and so succinct. So tell my brains how to get in contact with you, beautiful. All right. Well, right now my website is is old. It's being remade. I was hoping it would be done by today, the new launch of the website. But anyway, it's Marlu, M-A-R-L-U, Harris, H-A-R-R-I-S, dot com. And I am available. I have a, a group called the Couples Connection on Facebook, and, I, and I'm posting every day some just helpful hints for communication with your partner and that's an open group to join and it's called the couples connection and i have um and then also a facebook page marlu harris so my name is unusual enough that if you put in marlu m-a-r-l-u harris you'll probably find me and i also have a um a free uh audio of a hypnotic meditation to help you sleep. It's called a deep restorative sleep. That is on my Instagram bio page. There's a link for that. And I, I'm telling you, um, it's so wonderful. Last night I woke up, I think I was nervous about this. I got woke up too early. I was up for a couple of hours. I was journaling. I was messaging April here. I was messaging you. And afterwards I said, I need to get a couple of hours sleep before the podcast. And so I lived listen to my sleep meditation recording and I just, it works because it helps to, um, one of the things in it, one of the suggestions in there and it puts you into that hypnotic state is that I am repatterning my sleep so that if I do wake up, for example, in the middle of the night, that I'm able to just get into this relaxed state and go right back to sleep. And at first I did that for me, like we all do, healer, heal right. thyself. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So anyway, that's these are all ways to get a hold of me. Instagram, uh, I'm 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 there, and, and I'm definitely going to put you all your links in, and we're going to run them over and over again because it, brains. I could say it a million times. We have to get our shit together. Yes. You know, this is the perfect pause. The universe put the brakes on everybody. Everybody's in timeout. You know? Absolutely right. And if we are continuously fighting with ourselves and fighting with the elements and, you know, fighting with the information that we get, you know, it, it's it's never going to be a win-win. And that's what we're in this for, is we're in it to win it. And Marlou, you are definitely a winner. Thank you for being here on the edge with me and my brains. One last thing before we go, something that gives me goosebumps, is you are one for affirmations. <laughs> Yes. Affirmations and resilience. Yeah. Do you have one just that you could give us to carry with us um, in our hearts? Yes, and I, I absolutely do. And that, please go to my Instagram page because that's it's all affirmative statements and positive images. It's just that it brings my. It's I started it as being my happy place, just for me to go. And I would read that and I'd say, God, Marlo, that's pretty good. But anyway, so one of my favorite affirmations really is, I am whole and complete, exactly as I am. I am whole and complete, exactly how I am. Did you yeah. hear that, brains? Okay. You don't have to go to outside influences. You don't have to go to drugs, alcohol. You don't have to stay in that place of that place of pain. You are good enough. Thank you so much, Merlou. 
for being here on the edge. Please come back and visit me. Okay. I'd love to. And Absolutely. Keep us anytime. updated on what's going on. And couples, if you got some problems, you know, let's stay together if we can. And if we can't, talk to Marlou and at least be civil. You can consciously uncouple. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I work to try to keep it together first, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. All right. I love okay. you deeply and completely. Thank you, baby. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. Bye, brains. Thank mm -hmm. you.